starts when, when you climb into the car by the window. You start up the engine. It's a, it's a unique noise, you know. Then this fantastic gearbox, a rally gearbox, which when I drove it today is still up to date, you know. To drive an all-wheel car is something really exciting. When you drive a normal car, you put the power down, some wheels are spinning, there's no spinning, there's just forward, you know, it, the bloody thing always moves forward. With this car, bam, you hold the head down and off it went, like on a rubber string, you know. You approach the corner, sometimes in first, even in second gear, you shift it down, you knew when you hit the, the throttle pedal, the boost is right there, and then when you really did it, you put the power down, the immediate response of the boost, the immediate power that hits you into, into the seat, the immediate grip, and the immediate pulling around the corner with any spinning wheels, you know. I mean, those are moments in life you never forget. Porsche factory driver and once a day Professor Pierre called you know he was the former head of I said uh, Hans we need you we want to go to America. Audi stopped in rallying and decided to go on track racing it was a decision to support the American market with the presence of Audi because the market sailed from Audi in the US they dropped down and they had to do something about it the first car which then came out on track was the 1988 Audi Trans Am. When Audi asked me to go over there with the Transam car in 88, I was almost ready to go in one second. During the season then, we found out that Transam is a cool championship, but we need to prove a little bit more. Where can we show a little bit more technique? Where do we have other racing teams engaged, other manufacturers? So then, uh, of course, IMSA got an option, which I like pretty much, because then we have a little bit more of a race car. And as soon as I got into the car the first time testing in south of France, you know, I was totally, positively shocked, you know. We learned pretty quickly, due to the fact that we have an all-wheel drive system, the famous Quattro system, we need to find out how to best spray the load over the front and rear axle, you know, because this was part of our big advantage. We didn't have the horsepower like a, like a Corvette has or a, Must, or a Mustang had, and we didn't have the torque, for example, we had a turbocharged engine. So we needed to find out to do the best for our tires in putting the load to the front and to the rear. Walter Earl was in, in the team as a test driver, not only as a race car driver, because he had this experience brought in from Rally Championship, you know. They were playing there with 20, 30, 40% in the front and the rear to, to find the right balance. And the more testing we did, the more exciting I got, you know. their convincing overall victory in the 1988 American Trans Am series, Audi decided to move up a league. After all, success demands promotion, and IMSA is the top series in production car racing in the USA. We were really a really tight group, you know. I mean, we had free time, we were thinking about things, what they can do to the car. And because everybody took it so seriously, there were little things, you know, like on the car we did, we, we, we could try. Remember my engineer, Thomas Andor, who was in charge of the engines, for example. We did so much fine tuning on the engine in terms of throttle response. Turbo response was a big issue, you know, because normally when, when, you, when you go off the throttle, go on, then you sit and wait. 21, 22, boom, then the turbo comes, you know. But with the system we, we used from, from, from rallying with this pre-holding pressure system, you know, you put the pedal and the power was right there. But, but to adapt this all to racing tracks, it needs a lot of talks to the engineer, to the people. They knew it from Walter in terms of Valley, which is a different, different venue. But this intense group work we had made us so successful, you know. As Botschafter des Rallye-Sports, you must the Rallye-Fahrer here vertreten, damit the Rennfahrer endlich wissen, dass wir Rallye-Fahrer auf der Rundstrecke genauso gut sind wie Sie. The 
the standard kind of engines which were used in the US series was a V8 engine. This is a five-cylinder turbo engine with 720 horsepower. This was a very unique sound and this was something you heard. You were sitting on the grandstand somewhere and the people can really identify the car out of 10 other cars, which was the Audi or not. Yeah, some of the races we knew have the other cars, the Mustangs, everybody, and the, the Nissan. They have originally the better chance because they have just more power, you know, and they were also faster down the straight. But we had to wait, we had to be patient till they are sort of a little bit, they burned their tires, you know, in terms of oversteer. They have were very tough on braking, we had very good brakes, and we knew the more patient we are in the beginning, the better we are in the end. It worked out 90%, you know. When those guys blew the tires off and burned the brakes, then we passed by. Oh, lady! I just passed them, you know. <laughs> Lime Rock was great because there was this jump, you know, and there's one picture with the car, the front wheel in the air. Too low for flying and too fast for driving, you know, what I always used to say, which is good. Missing the first two races of the season at Daytona and Sebring spoiled Audi's chances in the series as a whole. The decision was not to run Sebring and Daytona because the development window was very, very narrow. Nevertheless, the Quattro's managed more wins than any other team coming first at Summit Point, West Virginia, Lexington, Ohio, Topeka, Kansas, Sears Point, California, Watkins Glen, New York, Lime Rock, Connecticut, and Laguna Seca, California. There's a clear list of my favorite race cars. Number one in the list is Porsche 962. There's no doubt because it was the perfect combination. And second was the GTO, because it was kind of a on the upper edge, regular chassis car, transformed into a race car, and was closer to a race car than to a street car. You know what I mean? The Audi V8 or, or the, the BMW 6 Series or, or 3 Series that they raced, you know? Those were street cars made into a race car, but this was actually the maximum we could do out of a street car. And then the combination of the unique sound, the power, the gearbox, just great. For the friends and fans of iRacing, I can just give you the good idea, try it. And maybe try a, a car which has a rear, rear wheel drive with lots of horsepower and choose any tight corner and then try it with the Audi 90. You will have the experience of your life, believe me. on a rubber band, you know, like you hold, you leave it off and boom, the car accelerates. Just try it. And then let me know. <laughs> <laughs>